it's another beautiful Sunday evening. Good evening. Uh, it's day number 11 in the month of February, year 2024. You're welcome to Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Iron Port is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel PLC, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, Meridian Port Services, and indeed Phoenix Insurance. The show is proudly powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA. And our media partner on this journey of a lifetime is the Business and Financial Times, the BNFT. If you want to have a grasp of all that transpired on the show tonight, make a date and definitely grab the Thursday edition of the BNFT. And you'll be able to see all that happened here uh, tonight. Indeed, we are streaming live on our social media pages on Facebook. We are live at Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Still on Facebook, we are live at Port of Tema. And on YouTube, we are streaming live at Iron Port Ghana. I am Port Ghana. Now, as usual, we shall be getting interactive with you, and all you have to do is sit back, relax, grab your phones, and send us your messages and comments via our dedicated WhatsApp line, 0559-019-177. 0559-019-177. Now, when the time is ripe and I pick signals from the production team, we shall activate the phone lines for you to call in and contribute to the discussion. My name is Kennedy Mona. We are going for a quick break. When we return, we'll continue the show. Please stay with us. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, I'll be calm. Shut <laughs> Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Euro 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey! Go for that boy, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Goyle, Goyle is good energy. Electricity. Then pay your taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Cellful, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Sterling, my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, 
We connect. You thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302-246-319 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, so welcome back. We are now going to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And indeed, businesses in the country are gearing up or bracing up themselves for new opportunities. We'll tell you why. Plus, the fact that the Association of Customs House Agents Ghana, ACHAG, also um, on Friday held its third annual general meeting and uh, they also elected new executives. We'll tell you all that we know about this particular story because Iron Port was there uh, to cover it. Plus, the fact that, yes, um, we're going to be telling you something about continuous professional development for maritime professionals and how that can enhance their efficiency and productivity. Uh, that's actually even our main topic for today, but for now, let's go for the local stories. We'll be back shortly. The Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana, Samson Asaki, says that businesses are bracing themselves up for new opportunities and advancements that will reshape industries and drive unprecedented growth in 2024. Speaking in an interview with Iron Pot, he called on governments to reflect on existing taxes as they pose a threat for the sustainability of businesses in the country. According to him, duties at the port and VAT on goods all culminate into the high cost of doing business in the country. But we are interested to know what they, they are going to put in their manifestos. So far, the taxes and other government fiscal policies are concerned. We look forward to see what will they do to con control city depreciation? What will they do to control inflation? What will they do to control interest rates? Because, and of course, who would assure us that whatever election that comes, at the end of the day, they will accept the verdict and we will have peace, political stability, and then business environment friendly. He attributed the issue of under-declaring by some importers to the high cost of taxes and duties, adding that compliance level would be high if taxes were lower and fair. Why did they underdeclare? If you take sub region, you realize Ghana is the highest so far as we're paying taxes and fees and charges. After paying taxes and fees and charges, we also have pull, um, issues with the shipping lines, local handling charges, that no government. Because at least as I came to do advocacy in 2014, I met President Mahama government and I met President Akufuru government. None of them are, don't have interest to say we are going to sit with the traders association, especially when the important as well as you keep on raising issues in regards to shipping lines, local handling charges that they pay at the port. As the country prepares to go to the polls in December 2024, he called on political parties to include in their manifestos policies that would address the city depreciation inflation and high interest rates in order to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. The Association of Customs House Agents Ghana has held its third annual general meeting. ACHAG has a national objective of ensuring maximum revenue mobilization to the state through education of its members. The AGM was under the theme doing business at the port in the face of current economic challenges. The outgoing president of Acha Giao Che said there was the need for government to address the high cost of doing business at the port, which may result in high inflation, smuggling, and reduction in purchasing power of importers and exporters, among others. Others also use neighboring countries to and smuggle in goods at very low costs and outsmart those who use legitimate means. Madam Chairperson, guest speakers, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, in the midst of all these difficulties, the association has done marvelously well in terms of customs compliance, training programs, advocacy, and influencing both port operational and procedural systems. The Deputy Marketing and Corporate Affairs Manager at GPHA, Nanesi Soderberg, who represented the Director General of GPHA, Michael Lugoje, called for strategic partnerships and collaborations, which he noted are critical to building 
business resilience and surmounting some of the challenges faced in doing business through the ports. Indeed, partnered efforts and collaboration enable benefits such as integrated development across the port's logistics and clearance chain. It enables potential cost reduction, which everybody needs through the alignment of our operations and our goals. It also enables critical and constructive feedback for improvement of our mutual activities. It provides a platform for a focused voice and vision where we can together work to implement these things. It also gives us robust communication channels amongst many other benefits. There were solidarity messages from some stakeholders in the maritime industry. Your diligence, integrity, and efficiency directly influence the effectiveness of revenue collection at our ports. By upholding high standards of professionalism and compliance, you contribute significantly to the economic stability and growth of our nation. Your dedication and tireless efforts in facilitating international trade have significantly contributed to the growth of our nation's economy, and for that, I commend you all. As we gather here today, I'm acutely aware of the pivotal role that custom house agents play in ensuring the smooth flow of goods across borders. Your professionalism and commitment to excellence and the driving force behind the efficiency of our trade processes at the Tema ports and across the country. Speaking at the event, a Deputy Minister for Transport, Alassane Tampoli, disclosed that a committee has been constituted under the economic management team with the responsibility to make recommendations on how to reduce cost of doing business at the ports. This, he noted, only goes to demonstrate the commitment of government to creating the enabling environment for port business to thrive, as well as solidify government's reputation as a listening government, having listened to concerns of various stakeholders in the port's value chain. It is therefore imperative that we strive to drive improvements within the ports to reduce transaction costs, facilitate trade, and position our ports as a hub for the West African subregion, particularly within the context of AFTA, African Free Continental Free Trade Area. It is for this reason, among other reasons, that government is investing in port infrastructure to facilitate the industrialization of the country as the ports are integral link within the maritime supply chain link. The AGM saw the election of the Vice President of Achag, Akwesi Srebo Boateng, elected as the new president. Maritime professionals and organizations are being encouraged to partake in continuous professional development programs in order to stay up to date with modern trends and happenings in the ever-dynamic maritime arena. According to the Chief Executive Officer of the West Africa School of Shipping, Gertrude Ohenesini, people working in the maritime industry must become abreast with local and international laws, conventions and practices to be able to perform at a competitive level. We are encouraging organizations, individuals that it is not enough to finish school and start working. You need to develop knowledge in the area in which you work and things change every day. And so you need to be abreast with international regulations, local regulations, what is new, what has been added, what has been amended, so that you are always on top of your game. She was speaking on the sidelines of an end-to-end -end shipping, logistics coordination and management training program at the West Africa School of Shipping in Tema. The participants, pulled from various subsectors and companies in the maritime industry, got the opportunity to discuss practical issues in shipping and logistics, including risk and trade disruptions and how to strategize and mitigate them. So basically, this is what we spoke about today. How do we organize logistics from origin to destination and avoid bottlenecks? Problems can happen. What will be your contingency plan when it happens? So these are things that sometimes we take for granted. 
Some of the participants shared their experience. As somebody who is into the port and shipping industry, I mean, it's a dynamic environment which will require that you constantly appraise yourself with what is happening globally. So I saw this um, course, a very important course, to understand the most current trends that is happening globally and how I can improve upon what I'm doing and how I can use the course, what I've learned, to improve upon health sector supply chains. I recommend the West African Shipping School to everybody outside there. It's a nice program. All right, welcome back. So those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. Indeed, we are going to the global stage to find out what's happening internationally. Danish Shipping and Logistics major AP Moller Mask AS has decided to initiate the separation of its towage and marine services activities in Vitsa AS through a demeasure. Vitsa, which has 430 vessels operating in 140 plus ports and 25 plus oil and gas terminals globally, has been part of the MESC group of companies for more than 40 years. As part of the demeasure, the shares in Vitsa AS and its subsidiaries as well as certain other related assets and liabilities will be contributed by AP Moller Mesk to a new legal entity under the name of Vitsa Group AS. Japan's Kobe Osaka International Port Corporation is launching an initiative to showcase the operational prowess of hydrogen-fueled cargo handling machinery, marking a global first in converting a rubber-tied gantry cranes diesel engine generator to a hydrogen engine generator. The project is commissioned by the Kinki Regional Development Bureau of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, in cooperation with the Port and Harbour Bureau, Kobe City Government. It will take place at the Kobe International Container Terminal, managed by Mystery OSK Lines at the Port of Hanshin. All right, so it's now time for us to take a look at the word or phrase of the day. And remember, the word or phrase of the day uh, segment has been fashioned to bring you up to speed with the terminologies and jargons we use in the shipping industry. Today's word is ashore. Ashore. A vessel that is ashore is a vessel that is on a beach, shore or land. All right, so welcome back. The year has begun, and uh, one thing that we're trying to look at is how we can, uh, uh, you know, leverage continuous professional development uh, in maritime professionals and see how that enhances their uh, capacity, their efficiency, and their productivity. And that is why we've decided that today this is the topic we're looking at. So that going to the year, if you're a maritime professional, uh, once you pick some tips from uh, tonight's program, you can be able to plan uh, and, and also see the need uh, to put that in your itinerary uh, to pursue professional, uh, continuous professional development to enhance uh, your expertise and your skills. And so it gives me pleasure this evening to introduce to us uh, Mrs. Uh, Gertrude Adria Ohini Esianim. Uh, she is no stranger to Iron Port. Uh, she's the executive director of Whitestone Shipbrokers uh, Ghana Limited and also West Africa School of Shipping. Indeed, she's also an executive member of the Institute of Chartered Shipbrokers, uh, you know, this international body. Uh, globally acclaimed is the main body in terms of uh, shipbrokers across the globe. Uh, she's also a lecturer at the Regional Maritime University. Uh, she's lectured me. <laughs> and then uh, she's also the president of the Ghana chapter of the Women in Shipping and Trading Association, Worcester, uh, Ghana. And so she wears so many caps. And uh, mom, I say good evening and thank you for joining us once again. Happy New Year. Good evening, Kennedy, mm -hmm. and Happy New Year to you too. It's good to come back on Iron Port in 2024. I haven't been here in 2024. Right. So I say Happy New Year to all our listeners mm -hmm. and especially to the students at the Regional Maritime University. Yes. The students, participants, and clients of West Africa School of Shipping mm. and White Stone Shipbrokers. My Worcester ladies, hello. <laughs> and, um, I'm sure they are of, watching. 
They are indeed. Yes, yes, it's yes, on yes. all the platforms. Yes, right. And we have our ICS members and fellows also watching and right. students. Mm. Also, my church members have co-opted them into maritime. So we are also watching. So awesome. hello to the Ghana Police Church members. Awesome. And also to my family. So now everybody around me is becoming maritime. Right. <laughs> I see. That's tremendous. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. We're grateful to have you. Um, like I said, um, the year is beginning, and this is the time if uh, any professional in the maritime industry wants to have a successful and smooth year and end the year with you know, some kind of like accolades, not accolades, maybe some knowledge in their bags, this is the time for them to start planning mm -hmm. uh, you know, on how and when they have and what they want to you know, learn in the course of the year in terms of professional, continuous professional development. I know you have been at the forefront of organizing this, these uh, uh, sessions uh, for uh, industry players in your institution, that's the West Africa School of Shipping. And that's why we uh, thought you a suitable candidate to discuss this particular uh, subject and to perhaps uh, tell the idea and drum home the need for people to take this uh, CPD thing quite seriously. So I just want to find out from you how uh, first of all, crucial it is for people in the maritime industry to take CPDs. Thank you so much, Kennedy. Um, I think I'll start with a quotation from Henry Ford. Mm. He says, anyone who stops learning is old. Right. Whether you are 20 or 80. And anyone who keeps learning stays young. Right. So, and the Bible says that for lack of knowledge... My people My perish. People perish. Mm. So acquiring knowledge is important. Right. Whether you're a day old or you're 100 years old and yeah. above. Knowledge is a continuous process. Mm. You don't learn and stop at a point. Yeah. Um, there's a famous quotation that says that the illiterates of the 21st century mm. are those who do not want to learn and learn and relearn. Right. It means it's not enough to learn and think that you're okay. Yeah. Because things change. Absolutely. And things evolve. Right. When you take uh, what is happening on the global front, things are moving very fast. Mm. When COVID struck, a lot of companies crumbled mm. because they did not have contingency plans Plan. yeah. for how to work when you're not in the office. Yes. And so cloud-based learning mm. is a continuous development thing. Right. And a strategy you put in place mm. to augment uh, what you have. So learning is a continuous thing. Mm. One, you learn to keep abreast with changes in technology, innovation, mm. culture, mm. ethics, corporate governance, yes. environment, and the list is endless. Mm. You learn to be able to master what you do. Mm. The act of perfecting what you do comes from continual learning. Mm. And again, you learn also to change roles so that you become dynamic and be able to um, be versatile mm. in what you do. Mm. So learning and so learning is diverse. Yeah. And it's not just about technical know-how. It's also about personal development, cultural, because how to even relate to um, in a multicultural environment, environment is yeah. something that you learn. Yeah. A gesture in Ghana, that means something positive, yeah. may mean something negative, negative to, to another culture. Yeah. So how, if you're a business and you want to expand culturally, globally, you need to then learn about the culture of your, of your, let's say, your principals or your associations yeah. or others. Right. So learning is something that we learn every, every day, day from our challenges, our mistakes. And then as things evolve, you get involved and right. also learn what's going on. Mm, mm, mm. So awesome. So I just want to find out, I'll come to you and see uh, what specific uh, programs and uh, the successful professional development courses that you you uh, you know organize at your place every now and then. But I just want to find out from you whether you've taken time to audit the kind of challenges that we have as maritime professionals and uh, how we can get these addressed. I see 
the major challenge in our industry mm. being people who believe that they've been doing something for so many years and so they don't need any more new ideas or concepts. Yes. And most people are very comfortable mm. with what they've been doing wrong for years. They probably are allergic to change. Exactly. Mm. And it's, it's interesting to see people even today say that computer and banner breast. Yeah. You know, so whether things are changing technologically, they still don't want to do online. Right. Or they don't want to do things with a computer mm. because it came after they were born yeah. or after their time. Yeah. But things evolve. And for you to be remain relevant, so you can be relevant today and not be relevant tomorrow oh, yeah. because you've refused to update your knowledge. That's true. So what you know is old mm. and no longer applicable, right. but you're still using it. I was surprised that a guy was undertaking a course and he sent me a portion of it for help. Mm. And I looked at it and it was Incoterms 2000. Wow. And the company had paid and somebody who is a trainer is taking them through Incoterms 2000. That is 20 years yes, old. old. When the current Incoterms is Incoterms 2020. Wow. So if you are still using Incoterms 2000, 2000. How functional are you? You can't be. You can't be effective you can't at all. You can't be effective. You can't be competitive because yeah. you are so old yeah. in the system. It's mm. still in co terms. Mm. It's been updated twice since yeah. 2000. Yes. 2010, 2020. Mm. So if you are still using in co terms 20, and I laughed and I said, who gave you this to do? Tell yeah. the person he needs to come to the West Africa School of Shipping for yeah. training. Yeah. And we laughed off. We laughed it off. Mm. But these are things people are doing. Yeah. People are still using old methods obsolete, yeah. and obsolete methods in their doings. Mm. So it's a big challenge. Our industry was such that in earlier years, mm. you only got into it when your family was either in it yeah. or it happened to you by chance. Right. I personally came into the maritime industry by chance. Mm. So I had no maritime background, yes. even after university. I hadn't heard about a lot of things in the maritime industry. Mm. But the difference is when you take time to learn. And so it's encouraging to see that a lot of uh, maritime schools and others has, have sprung up over the years. Yes. And people are now taking um, professional training a little bit more seriously. It will help streamline our industry right. and bring some sanity into some of the things that we do that we do not really take time to analyze its effect mm. on overall performance and efficiency. Right. So how do you say continuous training has uh, contributed to the growth and competitiveness of institutions in the maritime industry in our country? It's a lot. Mm. Basically, companies that do very well mm. and grow from generation to generation yeah. are those who've taken keen interest in developing the skills, the capacity, and the know-how of their personnel, mm. as well as the company itself growing. Right. Currently, for instance, the world is looking at ESG, environmental, social, governance impact. Right. There is technological advancement, automation, uh, cloud-based systems. Mm. Where are you in that? If you are a local company, and you are still using um, the old methods of doing things, paperwork. Mm. It will be difficult for any international company to do business with you. Yeah. So it means that you are not looking at expansion. You are not looking at growth. Yes. You are not looking at development. Mm. And these are bottlenecks. In, in, and that is why most Ghanaian businesses die after their owners. Mm. You know, because everything is in the pocket of one person. And without that person, nothing else moves because somebody has been doing something for 10 years yes. and they are still doing the same thing, mm. sitting at one place, yeah. doing the same, same thing, thing yeah. meticulously mm. for 10 years. Yeah. It brings burnout, yeah. fatigue, mm. monotony. Yeah. There's no excitement any longer to do what you do. Yeah. What about taking 
some uh, developing your skill in something different to add to what you already know right. to make you more versatile Absolutely. to be able to change roles even within the organization mm. you can be in the same organization but change roles yeah. what about updating your knowledge to be able to be uh, able to understand even what happens in other departments yeah i find it very strange for instance when students are in my class mm. and I ask them, for instance, they work with the Maritime Authority and mm. I say, what's the simple process for registering a ship? Yes. And they said, I don't know. You work in the organization, so were you not introduced yeah. to all the departments yeah. and were you not given um, an orientation when yeah. you started work? Yeah. Does that not mean that the most simple thing about something like registering of a ship yeah. as an employee of an organization that is one of the major things you do you cannot tell somebody the process then you're not going anywhere mm. so these are things you need to develop yes and that comes it's it's a it's a it's an effort that you put in to 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 add more knowledge to what you already do so to be versatile i remember when i started okay, i think this uh, yeah, I, so, so, so. Entered into the maritime industry, the mm. company that employed me, mm. one of the things they said was that you need to enroll at the regional maritime university mm. and do the uh, post and shipping administration. Course. Yes. So we were actually the first batch that okay. started that department. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. And in addition to that, mm. we were supposed to take a course in French. Right. And in addition to that, they introduced us to the Institute of Chartered Shipbrokers okay. exams. Right. The reason was that they had some partners in Belgium and they wanted to, them to know that their staff were very professional. Mm. And how do you become professional? Yes. You have to belong to a membership organization mm. and to be able to keep your knowledge abreast with what is happening. Yes. And at the time, I thought, what the hell? One employment. How can yeah. we go through all of this? this yeah. I yeah. didn't know how that was going to benefit me at the time. But yeah. today... I'm so proud of that company that introduced me to all of these because that was the necessary step yes. that I needed to enter into the maritime industry. industry. And at the time when I was taking the ICS course, I didn't know what it was going to do for me. Yes. About eight years down the line, the line. I found myself with an international company yes. looking for somebody to do ship brokering. Right. And... The, que the answer I got when I entered into the interview room was that, Madam, since morning we've been here, if we saw somebody with your CV, we would have ended the interview a long time ago. Right. So that wow. was eight years after. Yes. And then I saw the benefit yeah. of, of that. And so learning is one thing that is never wasted. Right. No matter what you learn in or invest in. Mm. And so we, sh we should begin to look at making our companies and ourselves dynamic yeah and learning includes developing as a person right that is why we even say that there is uh, wisdom in those who have gray hair absolutely because by the time you get gray hair you've gone through some challenges yeah made some mistakes yeah. and learned, learned from like, those mistakes relearn yeah. and unlearn yeah and so you've developed to a point that you can be in a position to be able to tell somebody about your life yeah so that that is what we are pushing that it is not enough to start a business yeah it is not enough to employ. Mm. And as a person, it is not enough to get a university degree mm. or any other qualification and stay where you are. Yeah. Otherwise, at a point, you become irrelevant. Yeah. And then people then start complaining. Yeah. I've been here for a long time. Why is it that the young ones are coming and they are being promoted and yeah. I'm not being promoted? Yeah. What effort have you taken to develop yourself? Yeah. It's a key question. That's true. That's true. All right, so let me find out from you. Apart from the quest of the individual or the, uh, you know, ability of the individual to take up uh, that uh, quest to uh, go for further training in terms of CPD, what role do organizations themselves have to play? Yes, we have some organizations that have training departments and they are solely responsible for some of these things. There are others that do not have training departments. But I think that the companies themselves should be able to identify the needs of their staff every year in terms of mm. CPDs. Mm. What role do they have to play in this? That's why organizations need to do an assessment mm. of their staff. Yeah. So you've put somebody in an operations role. What are the training needs the person needs yeah. to be able to develop 
and work efficiently in that role. Mm. So then you have to come up with the training program right. that will help the person grow. Mm. For instance, you can be employed as the CEO of a company. Right. So do you need training in leadership skills, mm. communication skills, right. presentation skills? Until now, if you see people's PowerPoint presentation, you'll be amazed. Mm. So verbose. PowerPoint is not supposed to be. It's different when you're giving it as a lecture notes. Yeah. But in a presentation, it's not supposed to be a verbose kind of presentation. Yeah. We, what are your audience? Who are you going to present it to? Yeah. How would you present it in such a way that they'll be able to... These are all things that you take um, courses for. Recently, mm. I'm enrolled on a Talo Supplier uh, Development Program. Yes. And on that program, there is a, a program on cyber security, for instance. So mm. now, I don't put my Bluetooth on because I learned about the risk of putting on your Bluetooth. Mm. That's the, up on your phone. On your phone. Right. You know, so these are things that you learn. Learning is, that's why I'm saying mm. it's a continuous. There's mm. a, a program on it on procurement. Mm. Companies have fallen into trouble just by not following the right, let's say, supplier due diligence procedure. Yes. Yeah. And some of international regulations are in, have indirect implications. Mm. We had a company going down years ago in Ghana where most of their customers around the world suffered penalties under the U.S. Anti-Bribery and Corruption Act right. simply because they had not signed on to say that, okay, we, we, according to our ethics and governance, we do not subscribe to any corruption practices and yes. others. That simple process of doing due diligence and signing something to exonerate yourself, yeah. your board, your, your employees, yeah. goes a long way to have yeah. saved them huge fines. Yeah. But these companies had to pay, pay the fines. Although mm. it was an indirect thing, not mm. a direct regulation in where they were operating. Mm. So these are, the organization has a lot of role to play. Yeah. To be able to assess the needs of the... So where do you want to go? What is your strategic plan? Where yeah. are you moving towards? Mm. And wh wh what are the skill set you need yes. to be able to get to where you want to go? Mm. That is something that you have to do an analysis of. Right. And then come up with training programs mm -hmm. that will take your employees there. Right. By them getting there, the company is getting there. Mm. And far more. And so it's important. It's that the training budgets shouldn't be the last thing on the on the planning skill. Right. And then the first thing to be taken out if you are cutting out on budget. Yeah, sure. Definitely in a year. Your employees need to do something. Mm. I, I can give you some examples. Yes. There were crew members who were traveling. And they got to an airport. And somebody had suffered a heart attack. It was one crew member who saved the person at the airport. Mm. Why? They had gone through first aid training. Right. And by that, they could immediately administer CPU. Right. And be able to resuscitate the person. Mm. That is CPD. It's not their core mandate yes. to be able to administer first aid. Yes. So what, what kind of training are you giving to your staff? First aid? Firefighting? Yeah. I mean, there are so many of them when, yeah. we, when we talk about CBD points. Yeah. So we're not just looking at technical know-how, mm. scientific know-how. It's also about personal development. Right. It's also about other um, soft skills that can help you to be holistic. Right. So it's a holistic approach to growth. Mm. And development. Right, right. Okay, so I just want to find out from you whether you've uh, taken your time to perhaps identify specific areas uh, in our maritime sector where uh, professional training is actually required. In, in our sector, a lot of people get employed in the maritime sector mm. from different backgrounds. Mm. So, for instance, you can be an HR yes. in a company, mm. a shipping line, yes. an agency, a port agency, a freight forwarding company. Yeah. You have a basic knowledge in understanding shipping. Right. Because as the HR, I mean, training programs and needs will come to you. Absolutely. How will you be able to assess and know that this is really what these people need? For that will come from approval, yeah. you yourself having a basic yeah. understanding mm. of, let's say, understanding shipping yes. costs. So 
Everybody in the maritime space needs some form of CPD. And um, once you've been employed from a geography background, yes. a sociology background, an engineering background, what do you need yes. to be able to upskill in that direction? So, for instance, if you're a marine engineer and you're working with a naval architect, yes. learning about automation or others technological know-how in the engineering space yes. will help you become better. Or are you, if you are a, an engineer, do you want to certify and become, um, let's say, um, a safety officer as well yes. on board so mm. that you can double up in your role? These, these make you multifaceted and mm. versatile. Right. And the most versatile people in an organization are the people that it's difficult to get rid of. Mm. So if you are happy doing one thing, and that's the same thing, if yes, you're an accountant, yeah. would you consider taking a course in, let's say, compliance? Yes. To make you be able to audit the processes and procedures of the company in, in making sure that um, all processes and procedures are in line with regulations and things that are happening around the world. Yeah. That, that gives you a step higher Mm. than, than uh, your, your peers. Mm. So this is what we are talking about, that we take a holistic view at who you are, where do you want to see yourself, yes. and develop yourself along those lines to be able to take up more challenging roles. So currently, health, safety, um, security, and environment is a huge thing. Mm. So if you are the HSE officer, yes. would you want to take up the inspector course so that you can also even audit other companies right that that is that is everybody's moving towards iso and all these auditing and that comes with extra income Ex exactly mm. so how versatile can you be, be uh, you know and and that's where the world is moving towards mm. so if you're into marketing are mm. you looking at looking at let's say social media marketing digital mm. marketing so that that's where the world is going so if you're just there You've learned marketing now from school and you've yeah. been employed as a... What will make you more efficient? Yes. More efficient to be able to cut down on cost, reduce wastage, time, effort, and be able to do what you do efficiently to overall cut down on cost, improve on efficiency, mm. and make you more dynamic to enjoy what you do. You know, CPD brings enjoyment because yes. knowledge is power. Mm. Mm. Knowledge is power. When mm. you speak... You are visible, you are relevant, yeah. and you are an authority. Mm. And, and, and you have dominance. Mm. And so that is what we are looking at right. at the West Africa School of Shipping. Shipping. So we're set up specifically mm. to provide continuous professional development, development. Right. for corporate organizations and individuals. Mm. Right. So my next question uh, is actually on West Africa School of Shipping, and I just wanted to find out from you whether you could share with us some examples of uh, successful professional development initiatives within uh, the West Africa School of Shipping. So the initiatives come from different folds. Mm. We pride ourselves as being the anchor for professional maritime training and mm. education. Mm. I'm sure you know what an anchor of a ship does to it, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. So I'm sure you sing that song. Will your anchor hold? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't have an anchor, you are sinking, right? Yes, yes, Great. Yes, yes. So um, we're looking at the total and holistic development in our industry. Mm -hmm. So we have affiliations with international organizations, mm -hmm. like the Institute of Charter Ship Brokers. Yes. In London, they've been doing maritime education and training for over 100 years plus yes. with a royal charter in London. Mm. And their courses are the best in the world. Right. Um, so we run their professional development courses, courses and we, they have about 16 courses in shipping. Right. So if you're afraid forward and you want to, for instance, move add ship agency to your job. Would you consider taking our port agency course? Mm. If you are into logistics, you want to add, let's say, ship management. Would right. you consider taking our ship management course? Mm. If you're a lawyer and you want to learn about maritime law, would yeah. you want to take our legal principles in shipping and shipping law courses? Right. If you are in insurance, 
Now we are talking about cargo insurance mm. being compulsory in Ghana. We right. want to take our marine insurance course. So mm. we have a, a course in offshore support industry, that mm. is the oil and gas sector. We have a course in chartering of ships from tanker, dry cargo, ship sale and purchase. If you are the banks and you give financing, we do mm. look at a course in ship finance. We have maritime economics and international trade. We have 16 courses to cover the entire 16, 16 wow. maritime space. space. So everything maritime. Mm. And the beautiful thing about these courses is that they all come with specific syllables worldwide. So mm. if you go to Canada and you are running the ICS course, mm. it's the same course you are doing in Ghana. The same syllabus, books have been designed, written by professionals, mm. authored by the professionals with practical experiences to govern each of these courses. Mm. So all the 16 courses come with their specialized books. Wow. Same syllables worldwide, same yes. books worldwide, same exam worldwide. So unlike other professional bodies where you can take professional exams in, with different syllables and different um, um, exams, ours is same worldwide. Wow. So anybody who sees you with MICS or FICS, they know that you took the same exam they took and automatically you are looked at in a different way yes. in the world. Right. So, and the course, the beautiful thing about the courses is that we have the foundation diplomas, we have the advanced diplomas, and then we have the professional qualifying exams. Right. So, for instance, just as like I said, maybe you are into logistics, but you don't want to do the full courses to become a member of the institute. You can just take our course in uh, logistics and multimodal transport. Right. And then get your advanced diploma or... Uh, your uh, foundation diploma. And one of the beautiful things about the courses is that some of the universities in the UK and others equate it to a degree. Mm. So if, for instance, if you have the full PQE course, yes. uh, 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 colleges like the uh, Plymouth University um, mm. would we'll, we'll take you to do um, dissertation to, right. to get a master's degree. degree. And uh, 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 um, universities like Malmo and others, mm. when you have the certification, Regional Maritime University, you will be granted exemptions. Yes. And so you can take up to about four courses instead mm. of seven. Yes. And then you, you qualify to become a member of the institute. We also have ICS, affiliation, okay. yes, okay. ICS in London. Mm. And then we also have online courses, right. bespoke courses right. that we run um, just so, for people to upgrade their knowledge, yeah, knowledge in what they do and get certified. Mm. And so port agency, ship management, mm. um, liner trades, that's the containerized industry, right. and shipping law mm. and many others. Okay. We also have affiliation with the world of shipping Portugal. Right. And they also have their courses online mm. where you can enroll mm. a, a day bespoke course, right. two days, three days master classes. Right where you also get your certification from a world of shipping in Portugal. Mm. And then we design bespoke courses for industry, right. like what you just played on Thursday. Yes. That was end-to-end -end shipping. Yes. The participants were thrilled. Absolutely. They were absolutely excited. These are things we put together ourselves. So yes. you can give us your organizational needs and mm. tell us what you need in terms of training. Yeah. And we can put in a bespoke, a yeah. tailor-made course yeah. just for you. Mm. Even if you want to include your own company, corporate ethics. Yeah. So for instance, starters in every shipping company can mm. take the understanding shipping course right. or the foundation diploma in, in, in a course right. to be able to give them the grounding mm. to start work. Right. And it's, most of these courses are also online. I see. And so it's flexible. Yeah. We do the tutorials and the classes and the online courses in the evening, right. so after work. Mm. And for instance, when you sign up to the ICS online mm. portal, mm. Uh, you have the leverage of the materials have been uploaded. Right. Presentations are uploaded onto the, onto the uh, well, London School of Shipping um, um, portal. online portal. Mm. And then with the login details, right. you can learn. And then groceries for shipping technologies, right. like what we just played, yes, are absolutely. also available to you. So whilst we are learning, you also, because maritime English is also a course. Absolutely. It's a CPD right. okay. course you need to take, yeah. maritime okay. English, yes. to be able to speak. So I always fight with people in my office and time. We don't say ABCD in yeah. maritime. Yeah. 
you know, you have to you have to mention speak the, the language. Yes, yeah. yeah, speak the language. Mm. So mm. you you talk about the ship, the yeah. stand, the aft. Yes. You you, are, you should speak the maritime parts, yeah. language when yeah. you are in the industry. Absolutely. So that that is what would distinguish you or somebody who is not in maritime. Right, if yeah. you are usually left to right, mm. middle, yeah. center, That's true. you are the same as the person who is not in maritime. Yeah. And so learning maritime language. Mm. And when people are sending you emails, yeah. they're not going to write the full abbreviation because they should see that you should know. Yeah. So they'll write essay yeah. or SP, yeah. safe port, safe yeah. anchorage, safe. Yeah. They'll just write that. Yeah. And they expect you to, to know. know. How do you know? Absolutely. It's by learning. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm told um, we have um, Dr. Andrew Zosai Mensa. He's the vice president in charge of education and professional development at the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, CILT, Ghana. Uh, good evening, Doc, if you can hear me. I can hear you well. Awesome, absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, tonight we're taking a look at the role of professional uh, development, uh, continuous professional development, uh, you know, in, in our maritime professionals as a country and how that can enhance their efficiency and productivity uh, so that we can have a robust maritime uh, as it were, industry in our country. I just want to find out from you uh, what our situation is like as a country, because I know CILT has also been at the forefront of organizing some of these uh, CPDs for, for maritime professionals. Tell us if you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, some information on what our situation is as a country uh, and as an industry. Oh, thank you, Ken. Um, first of all, let me greet your listeners and viewers, and let me also greet Gertrude. She used to be my lecturer at Ghana Institute of Free Forwarders. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. If you look at, I've been listening to her, mm. and these days we, people should understand that if you belong to a profession, mm. then you must develop yourself as such. Right. And therefore, con continuous development is key. Mm when it comes to your profession. Mm. Now, if you look at Ghana uh, Maritime, it is an anchor of our income. You realize that a lot of goods are being carried out and then in through the, uh, the country, through the uh, maritime uh, the ports, okay? Yes. And therefore, we must take interest in what goes on at the port. Mm. CILT, that is the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. Right. We have a full uh, department, which is the maritime. Mm. So if you come to our structure, we, we have vice president in charge of maritime. maritime. What it means is that you pay more interest in the maritime issues, how to develop our uh, people in maritime. Mm. And therefore, um, you see our CPDs, most of them structured in some of the things that uh, Getty was talking about. Yes. That as a, as a profession, how do you put yourself in a situation whereby you'll be able to uh, do your work well. For, at first, you realize that, for example, somebody will be hired a, a manager and then driver, you hire a driver to drive you. But this time, companies ha have stopped almost that particular thing. So that mm. when you are coming, if they are employing you, they want to see whether, whether you, can you can drive, drive yourself. You have a license, so, yeah. so, Yes. Mm. So, so many things like the, uh, the safety thing, she mentioned, I remember um, there was a time I opened fire blanket and I asked people, most of them had never seen what fire blanket is. Right. And therefore, in a professional way, we believe that you should be a holistic person so that if you're in a maritime, let's say you are working at a Steve Door session, mm. then you should know almost everything. It's not a situation whereby you don't know what to do. And CLT, you are into that. Right. We develop our people in such a way that, yes, by the time you finish, you get our certification. Mm. Then you're a full-fledged person who can work perfectly at the maritime. And therefore, right. you see, our course is structured in such a way that it will develop you well. If you look at currently, yes. the country is suffering. Mm. One, because almost, I wouldn't say almost, most people are corrupt. Right. Corrupt in the sense that people try to cut corners. Mm. Yeah, CLT, if you remember, there was a situation whereby <laughs> if you see that you are not doing what you're supposed to do, we will, we will deal with you. Mm. Yes, in the same way, we also believe that wherever you are working, if people are intimidating you because you're doing the right thing, then yeah. we will support you. Right. So the Ghana Maritime, we need to look at it well 
and develop almost everybody so that we do the right thing at the right time. Right, right. Okay, so let me find out from you. Um, are there any specific areas? I asked uh, Madam uh, Ohenesi in this particular question. Are there any specific areas that you think that we should focus our attention on in terms of uh, continuous professional development in the maritime sector? Oh, yes, there are a lot. Mm. There are a lot. If, like, she was talking about the language, she mentioned about, she said, uh, was it uh, ship brokerage? Yes. Yeah, we speak that language. If we are in maritime, you should be able to speak maritime language. Mm. Okay. And therefore, people who are working at the maritime should be in a position that they understand exactly what the maritime issues are about. Mm. How do you uh, clear goods for export? Mm. How do you clear goods for import? How do you prepare your consignment? If you look at how good, for example, if you go to the railway. Yes. If you have goods and it's, you are given to a railway line, and let's say you go for a wagon, you should know that the, 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 the responsibility lies on you to make sure that you pack your goods in the wagon in such a way that it will not create a problem. Right. So everywhere, if you are, have goods and you are shipping it through inland waterway and it's a dangerous goods, you should be able to let the carrier tell them how they should carry the dangerous goods. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, maritime, we need people who understand the business, people who will be able to help clients mm -hmm. explain to them that, yes, this good that you are shipping, it should not be this, it should be that. Mm -hmm. You should be able to help them. And yeah. so, and then again, we should develop our people so that internationally they can compete with the international uh, maritime business, not only local. Some people think that maritime in Ghana is only Takrade and Temano. Mm. If you have the, assume you are working under GPHA, and GPHA sends you to another country, mm. it will be a, it should never be a situation whereby you don't know exactly what you are doing. And therefore, mm. we believe that our our, our system should be in the stage in, in such a way that even if I'm working at the finance department at the GPAG, mm. I understand a bit of almost everything over there. Yeah. So there is not a situation where I wait, this man has not come mm. before you at least. So if you are talking about total quality development, mm. then it means a little, a little bit of almost everything at yeah. the point. Because these days, it's not only I'm finance, so yeah. that is so I don't know yeah. anything about auditing, no? Yeah. I'm only stiff, though I don't know anything about uh, dangerous goods. Mm. I'm working at dangerous goods, so I don't know anything about oil and gas. I'm mm. not saying you should learn everything, but at least a little bit of everything right. within the organization, you should at least know something about it. Right. Okay, so there's this issue. I think this will be my last one to you. There's this issue about some of the staff or workers or employees of organizations within the maritime industry who are willing, who are anxious, who really want to take up professional, continuous professional development uh, programs just to better themselves. But we have organizations that kind of are not friendly in terms of accepting and approving some of these requests uh, by staff. I just want to find out from you what should be the demeanor or position of organizations within the maritime industry in terms of facilitating and approving you know, demands and requests by their employees and staff to uh, undertake such programs. Oh, okay. You mean the, the staff should assist them in developing them? Is that what you're asking? The organizations should assist them, yes. Yes, uh, yes. CLT, what you normally do is that most of our people at a certain time come to us and we write to their organization explaining the need for such and such program that they should allow them or they should sponsor them. Right. For example, just last November, we had a, a annual general meeting, and most of our members organized, we wrote to them explaining that this AGM is necessary for them because we included seminars. Mm -hmm. And the seminar was very, very good, and it right. was well attended. So uh, we should we are advising managers and then CEOs to at least understand where their staff are, are coming from, right. I mean the professional areas, and try to have interest in them. Just fri last Friday, I went to a company, mm -hmm. I won't mention the name, and the, the CEO was so happy when I explained to them what we are doing as CRLT. Yeah. And therefore, we are advising managers, please understand your staff and let them develop themselves, even at least 
if they themselves are not coming, you should help to support them in CPDs. Right. Because new things are coming. For example, at this time, if you're a CEO and you always want to sit down and uh, what is it? Uh, uh, approve letters mm. physically. You are late. Mm. You should be at this time. You should be in your car to sign documents. Yeah. So that whilst you are traveling from Accra to Wariware, the people at, in Accra office will be pushing your documents. You so we them. believe that CPD is important. Therefore, almost everybody, especially with the married time, mm. should be given the chance to develop themselves. Right. And CILT, we do it almost time and time. Yeah. We have sessions. We have so we have five sessions, mm. and almost every month sessions will meet, and they have topic. They talk about topical issues, and it's very very educative. Right. We also, at a certain time, organize programs and invite members and non-members, pay mm. their programs. Mm. At a certain time, they are also free. Mm. So why? Because we want our members to be abreast of the current issues. Yes. And therefore, we still want to encourage managers that please support your staff. Right. Let them develop themselves continuously. The word is continuous. Yes. So if you develop me in June last year, this time, new things might have come. AI yeah. yeah. is coming. Yeah. Help me to develop myself. Mm. So mm. thank you. Ken. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Andrews Osei, Men's and Vice President of Education and Professional Development at the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, CILT, Ghana. We're deeply grateful to you uh, for sparing some time to uh, talk to us uh, as far as this particular topic for tonight is concerned. We're grateful. Now we're going to go for a quick break. When we return, we'll continue the discussion. Please do stay with us. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, are they come? Shut <laughs> Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Well up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey! Go for the boy, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle. Good energy. Goyle, Goyle, Goyle. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high seas, covered with the marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now
MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302. 246-319 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, so welcome back. Uh, remember, this is our report here on Metro TV, and tonight we are taking a look at the role of profe uh, continuous professional development and uh, how that can actually enhance the efficiency and productivity of maritime professionals in our country. And with us in the studios uh, tonight is Madame Gertrude Ajua Oheni Esienim. Uh, she's a fellow of the, Chartered, of the Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers. Uh, she's also the director of White Stone Ship Brokers Ghana Limited and West Africa School of Shipping uh, Limited. Remember, in my intro, I told you she's also a lecturer at the Regional Maritime University. She's also, uh, you know, the, as it were, uh, president, uh, Ghana chapter, Women in Trading and Shipping, Women in Shipping and Trading Association, Wister. Uh, that's Wester Ghana. She wears a lot of hats uh, tonight. She's here uh, to help us appreciate the importance and uh, how imperative and necessary uh, continuous professional development in our country is. I've been told by the production team that we can activate the phone lines. For you to call in, the number to dial is 020-552-8353. 020-552-8353. You can call in and contribute to the discussion. To pretty sure we shall be going to your messages at uh, the inbox and bringing out your messages so that we can read them to the rest of the world and elicit uh, some responses uh, for you. But uh, let me come to Madam once again in the studios and uh, find out from you how um, there can be a collaboration between academic institutions uh, and then industry stakeholders to further promote uh, continuous professional development. Um, so, so before I answer that, mm. I want to say a big shout to Dr. Andrew Osermesa. Okay, yes, yes, yes. He, he reminded me of my teaching days at the Ghana Institute, Institute of, of Free Forwarders. Forwarders. Absolutely, yes, yes. yes and yes. all these institutions have come to help yes, to build right. up the knowledge and, 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 and bridge the gap. In, right. in. And I remember my days at uh, GIF yes. when people could say that, oh, we've been doing this for 10 years. Yes, yeah. But would you know this is how it works? Yes. You know, right. so... It's, the, it's important to see people grow, and, yeah. and I'm very glad that... Um, so, Andrew, congratulations for Absolutely. being the VP for SILT. Yes. Um, that is what we are looking at. Absolutely. Developing, Absolutely. growing, yeah. and then taking up more challenging roles. You took it seriously, you yeah. Now, to answer the question of the bridge between academia and... and industry stakeholders, yeah. Um, the direct results of what we get in industry is what academia produces. Mm -hmm. And so it's about time that industry also focus more also on helping academia. All right. So mm -hmm. it's about time we industry we focus on industry helping academia. academia. When we come back, we continue from there. But let's go into the phone lines and welcome uh, Noble, who's calling us from Adenta. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Uh, please but, shoot. Uh, yeah, please. I would like to ask the madam if I want to take. If I want to take any course in the uh, uh, shipping industry mm. as an undergraduate, which of them would you recommend? As an undergrad? Yes. Okay. All right. Sure. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Noble. All right. Yes. All right. So the shipping industry is made up of various sectors. Mm. It's a very interesting space, right? Mm. When people talk about shipping, people look at it as a small um industry right our shipping is really huge mm. just like the course we did end-to-end yeah. -end logistics yes. right from yes. the beginning to the end of yes. manufacturing something mm. what logistics go into it right. and then how does it get to your doorstep yes. right so shipping is yeah. wide we have different sectors different scopes different areas mm. 
So it will be good to talk to us so that yeah. we can know where you want to go. Is yeah. it in freight forwarding? Yes. Then we'll recommend freight forwarding courses. Right. Is it in um, supply chain management? Mm -hmm. Is it in um, chartering? Is right. it in port agency? Is right. it in ship management? Mm. Is it in ship chandling? That is supplying things to ships. Right. There are so many schools. Is it in crewing? Yeah. There are so many areas. But the first step will be to enroll to have a holistic knowledge right. in the industry. So mm. for instance, taking the understanding shipping course right. or the foundation diploma in which is made up of our introduction to shipping right. and then one specialized area that we want to look at. Mm. So it will be good to talk to us and then we can actually recommend Advice, exactly yeah. what you need. Mm. Maybe the foundation that you have, you just need some master classes yeah. in, let's say, uh, supply chain yeah. management, then you can build up on that. So right. it would be good to talk to us, and then we can point you at that. Now, okay, so, yes. To continue with the question. If yes, okay, no so let me, let me. Uh, if, if a novel is still listening, please, uh, you can grab your pen and uh, take down our number. That's our WhatsApp number, which is 0559019177. You send a message there, uh, the team would respond to you and then link you up with uh, Madame and her team, and then you can take it up from there. Thank you, yes. Yes, so, as I said, the direct products of what happens in academia is what end up in the industry. Mm. So what can the two institutions or do yes. to be able to come up with the best? Right. That will come with um, tapping into each other's um, strengths yes. and weaknesses and mm. then building the bridge and the gap. Right. So what about mentoring? Right. People become what they see. Mm. I, I never heard about shipping right right from primary school to when I finished the university. Uni, yeah. Because I was not an Accra girl, probably, yeah. so I wasn't yeah. close to the sea. Yeah. But so what do we even do with our secondary schools? Right. Now you can see that um, secondary school graduates are two months in school, two months off. Yes. They could even take a simple course in maritime geography. Just introducing them to the oceans, tides, waves, things that happen at the sea. Mm. And that can be sponsored by industry to give free uh, courses to these uh, graduates whilst they are home. Yes. And that's something that we are looking at that's to do. Right. And to introduce young people in senior high schools mm. early enough to understand shipping. Shipping, all right. To understand shipping and to take an interest in it. In it. We can we'll, also we'll, talk about. We'll come back. We'll, we can also talk about. Mom, well, sorry for interrupting, <laughs> but let's go into the phone lines and welcome Emmanuel, who's calling us from. Is it Kumasi or Bwasi? Good evening, sir. Good Pukwasi, evening. Okay, Pukwasi. Right. Yeah, Emmanuel, I'm calling from Pukwasi. Right. Please shoot. Yes, I, I wanted to clarify. Um, I actually I have a background in quality assurance and chemistry. Right. So I wanted to know: Is it possible I can take these courses and start a new career path in the shipping industry? Great. And I, I will be grateful if you could uh, mention the number again because uh, you were very fast. Okay, the number so, is 0559 019 Or if Madam would also give her number directly, Madam, you can, you can give your number directly. Okay, so too. my number is 050. One four one one nine eight eight zero five zero one four one one nine eight eight. Great. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, so much. yeah, so Madam will also still answer your question, but thank you very much, Emmanuel from Pukwasi. The, the beautiful right. thing about shipping is that we accommodate everybody. Yeah. So you can be a quality assurance person and still be able to work in shipping. Yeah. Chemistry people are employed on board vessels. Mm. You just have to add your mandatories, for yeah. instance, and get your STCW certificate right. to be able to go on board a vessel, mm. to be able to work in, in the laboratory, like on board yes. an FPSO or something mm. like that. So we take doctors in shipping. Yeah. We take cooks. Yeah. So shipping is, as I said, is dynamic. Absolutely. Very versatile, yeah. interesting, cutting across the globe. I yeah. like the answer that Dr. Andrew Andrew, said, yeah. gave that shipping is not Tema and Takrad. Yes. So I get angry when people write time and say 12 noon. Yeah. What time is that? Yeah. Is it GMT? Is it okay. BST? Yeah. 
which time? Because yeah. GM at uh, 12 noon, if you're having an in, uh, a meeting with an international, yeah. 12 noon is what time? Which yeah, of the sure. times? Yeah, absolutely. Which time zone? Right. So this is what we're talking about. Shipping is international. Mm. So mm. when you're doing mm. things, you think internationally mm. and, and, mm. and how you can make a positive mm. impact so mm. that you can also be competitive along the globe. Right. So, um, and it's a dynamic industry, yeah. as I said. We, we accommodate almost everybody. everybody yeah. And so you just need to know where you want to be and specialize. And mm. that comes from, as I said, you have to speak to um, the experts so that they can point you out to the right direction of which yes. courses you can take. So okay. the callers can, can call us um, for, for more. Okay. But as, as I was saying, um, for academia... I spoke about mentorship. Yes. Uh, there's also so before problem come for, solving. Yes, ma'am. Before we come to mentorship, <laughs> let, let's note that. Uh, I understand we have a caller. Hello. Uh, yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Lee from Damongo. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, also, I did geography in uh, university, so I want to ask Madam my area in... Uh, shipping. <laughs> okay. Is possible. okay, all right. Yes, the same In, question. Interesting. I, I studied geography for my first degree. I did geography and English. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I graduated and mm. took the um, Ports and Shipping Administration course, which together with my ICS courses and other courses, and today I'm here. Yes. So you are you are still in business. Um, it, the most important thing is that you have the foundation and you can build upon it, and you can be trained um, to fit into um, the other areas in, in shipping, logistics, trade, and the, the entire maritime industry. So um, he can still talk to us, and then we will point him out, see where his interest is. about interest. It's about where you want to develop. You mm. know, you're not just looking for a job. You have to develop a career. Yes. And you develop a career by taking professional courses. When you have a chartered status, like Andrew pointed out, yes. you, are, you are signing out, not just becoming a professional. You have to maintain your professional status. Yes. And that comes with continuous professional development. development yes. And that comes with signing up to code of ethics. Yeah. And, and so when you know that you are doing business with a professional, mm. you know that you are getting the best out of it. Because Absolutely. the person has skill, ability to be able to go the extra mile yeah. to solve your problem for you. Awesome. So they should talk to us and then we'll be able to get them there, okay. where, what they have to do. All right, so I understand we have David from Amra here on the line. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Awesome. Please shoot. Uh, yes, my name is David. Uh, yes. And I'm calling from Amra here. Yes. I'm actually a graduate of um, um, regional Hatam University. Okay. I, I did marine engineering. Okay. Uh, and I was listening to the woman. And yes. Um, Madam, and I wanted to find out if there's any avenue where I could come to them for career advice because I've not been to see yet, mm. but I wanted to find out if there's an uh, a way that I can have a career, you know, path or something. Okay, like that. all right, awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Dave. We are grateful to you okay, for your call. Welcome. I think that uh, that day would be our last caller because time is actually not. On our side, yes, ma'am, if you can respond. Certainly, yeah. uh, we do give career guidance and advice so he can come and see us and mm. then we can talk more about that. Mm. Certainly. Yes. Okay, so I think you were on a point. If you can make that and tell us, uh, uh, you know, West Africa School of Shipping, what you have, you know, uh, mm. planned uh, for the year or maybe the first quarter uh, that you think that you want to share with the masters so that they can. All right, can, so uh, yeah. um, the point I was making was about academia and uh, industry. Mm. I would want to see a lot more collaboration in the area of research. For instance, giving uh, real case scenarios for mm. problem uh, for students to solve for industry. Um, also taking students on industrial attachment and practical um, hands down job shadowing and mentorship and many more that we can do to bridge the gap. And also for industry to employ the graduates who also have the professional qualification and academic qualifications mm. in shipping. Um, at the West Africa School of Shipping, we do training programs every month. Right. Uh, some twice in a month. As I said, some online. So we have um, on the 21st and 22nd of 
February, we have Incoterms training with the International Chamber of Commerce. It's right. a collaboration. Okay. And then at the end of the month, 29th and 1st of March, we have Carriage of Goods by Sea. Mm. Somebody told me that they send their goods on, on, on board a vessel. And then the carrier, everything came wet. And the carrier says they'll pay them 2000 And mm. I said, well... Carriers two thousand Ghana cities or dollars. Two thousand dollars. I said they have the right to limit their mm. liability. So if you've lost so much, and maybe under the carriage rules, mm. based on the limitation of liability convention, yeah. that's what they are supposed to pay you. So mm. come and acquire the knowledge in yeah. carriage of goods by sea. Yeah. Learn about, about the conventions. A friend of mine just recently travelled by air and lost. The, the carrier didn't de uh, develop, uh, deliver their bags. Right. And they are paying them something very small. Small, yeah. These are all limitations mm. under your carriage of goods or passengers mm. or anything. So knowledge is important. Yeah. Then it, when you have the knowledge, you know that you don't just bring in goods. But yeah. Maybe you take insurance yeah. to mitigate that risk. Yeah. So these are things you need to know and mm. learn. And so at the end of the month, 29th and 1st, we have carriage of goods by sea. Mm. We have our port agency course. Mm. Uh, which is going to be online on the ICS, uh, the um, London School of Shipping Chippen, or the Institute okay. of Chartered Shipworkers mm. online portal. Right. And different, different courses, international trade cycle. Mm. We have trade finance and transport documents upcoming. Right. And so, so all sectors from mm. banking, we have, in fact, shipping law coming up for those who are lawyers who want to learn about um, the... Uh, maritime industry and the yeah. legal principles and liabilities there. Right. We have marine insurance coming up. Mm. So different subjects, coming different up. areas. Awesome. So just contact us and then we'll let you have the calendar for the year oh. and what area you want to specialize in or you mm. want to know more about and then we can talk more. Awesome. If you can just, uh, for la the last time, uh, leave, give your number out and then we'll take some messages and wrap up here. Yeah. All right. So the number again is 50 141 one nine eight eight zero five zero one four one one nine eight eight. Awesome. All right. So Thank this you. one says, uh, "Very good delivery there by Madame Gertrude. Always a pleasure seeing her teach." Now this one is from Araba in Tema. This one says, "I'm so." Uh, it says what? So I am a security officer at the port, but I may want to live live my dream. Uh, I may want to live my dream as a logistician. Uh, what is the available? What is available for me considering my income level? Understanding shipping. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding shipping. Okay. All right. So that's that's a response uh, for for you, uh, uh, Seidu in Tema. Uh, Madam says you would have to begin with understanding shipping, and so you can reach out. She just uh, gave the number out. This one says, can we have incentives for maritime professionals uh, to become employed in the shipping industry? Uh, because in Ghana, it is as though what you have, what you have stated, doesn't matter in getting a job. Uh, what does your guest think? Okay, we'll elicit a response from Madame for you. Uh, this one is from Bella in Accra. And this one says, Ghana's maritime industry looks like it is limited to working in the port. Can our, academic open, our academics open our eyes to more opportunities in this sector? My name is Stanley in Odoko. Well, so that's how we uh, do the curtain on this week's edition of Our Import here on Metropolitan Television. Remember, we've been taking a look at the importance of continuous professional uh, development programs. Uh, and uh, our guest in the studios has been Madame Gertrude Ajua uh, Ohene Esienim, who is uh, the Executive Director of White Stone Ship Brokers Ghana Limited and West Africa School of Shipping uh, Limited. She's also a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers uh, in London, UK. Uh, we thank you so much, Madam, for uh, obliging us. And we know that we can always have you. Uh, you always oblige us when we need you. Thank you very much indeed. And so we also thank you for watching and for contributing uh, to the discussion. Remember to watch the brief version on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Ghana, uh, you know, at Ghana, on Ghana Television GTV. And we also entreat you to keep watching the rest of our programs here. And remember, uh, next week, God willing, we shall bounce back with another wonderful edition of Iron Port here on Metro TV. My name is Kennedy Mona. Thank you so much for watching and have a super week ahead. Good evening.